Hey everybody, uh, Brian Good here. We got a lot to cover, guys, so let me dive right into it. First off, here's the visible satellite. We've had some fog and high level clouds around now. Getting some hints of sunshine to the west of us and to the south of us. We'll be monitoring that for increased activity with the warm front moving in later on for today. The radar, though, has been lit up already with uh, a training effect here. These downpours across Indiana, flash flood of warnings around. It's a tremendous amount of rainfall now coming down near the IU campus. Uh, we're starting to see some increase now in activity in western Kentucky. We'll see how that plays out as we get through the morning period. Uh, but overall, it's going to be an afternoon event, it looks like, for a lot of us. Here's the overall setup that we're talking about. Warm front is going to be moving in today from the south and west. And then the cold front with the upper low right here spitting about will kick in. But there's a little triangle area. This is the warm sector in between the two fronts, the cold and the warm front. That is the area where the Storm Prediction Center is focused on for severe weather for the afternoon. But we've got to watch that leading edge of that warm sector, which is the warm front, this afternoon for perhaps some stronger thunderstorms even in our neck of the woods. Latest outlook from the Storm Prediction Center, low end severe risk here. And overall, i got to stress this, guys. This is a low end deal. This is not a major outbreak or anything like that. Uh, just a few thunderstorms that can produce warnings. And it, it, keep in mind, when they issue the watch boxes, they base that on coverage of warnings that could be issued. And if they're not expecting a lot, they may not go with the watch box. So that can be misleading sometimes because you get a warning or two. You're like, where's the watch at? Well, they have their criteria they go by on issuing watch boxes. So uh, I wouldn't worry about whether or not we have a watch or not. Just worry about the idea of an isolated warning or two that could develop. That's the overall idea. It does not include global, by the way, officially. It's just west of us in western parts of wave country, breaking down the threats, tornado threat closer to the triangle area of Illinois when that uh, vortex or the low itself moves in. you got that warm sector. Uh, large hail risk is not even on the chart, but damage wind potential, pretty much the main issue here that's triggered the marginal risk to be with. A couple of models. First off, here's the HER model. It initialized pretty good. It's got that band of rain heavy to the north. So it has started to increase now the act activity for the afternoon along the warm front as it passes through the area. Say 3 or 4 o'clock, that's what the watch for a couple of thunderstorms. Anytime you get a warm front moving in, you change the direction at the ground level uh, quickly to the southwest. Uh, and in some cases even southeast, and then you've got uh, stronger winds aloft in a different direction, and that can cause the turning of the wind, and you end up with some rotating thunderstorms. But if it's not a violent rotation, it's just a gentle rotation, if you will. And I think most of these thunderstorms today on the warm front will gently rotate. The question we got to figure out is, is there a chance that a couple of them could go a little stronger on that rotation idea? And if that's the case, then we could be talking about damage wind potential, maybe a brief tornado. That's what we got to figure out, though. It's a very marginal deal, guys. The, the amount of rotation that happens here is not dramatic. It really just depends on how unstable we can get this afternoon. That's why I'm watching the amount of heating we'll pick up in the afternoon period. Then uh, we'll get into the warm sector for a few hours this evening. So I've taped the rain chance down then, and then we'll deal with the cold front part, which I think could actually trigger some more uh, rough thunderstorms, mainly in Indiana counties, closer to that triple point, that triangle point. Uh, overnight will be Indiana. I doubt much will happen further south of the Ohio River. That was the HER model. Let me show you the RPM. This is the current radar view. RPM says this is what it should look like, which for once RPM is not overly dramatic compared to what the reality is. It's not too thrilled on the afternoon activity. And overall, I'm not too thrilled with RPM on that idea. Um, I think it's underdoing the, I, the potential for thunderstorms this afternoon. Uh, so keep that in mind. Now, it does have the overnight activity moving in with the actual front. So and it does agree with Indiana, and I agree with that. Uh, and then you can see actual boundary passing through. We may not drop below 75 until that boundary hits at, say, 5 or 6 a.m. could be a very warm and humid, muggy evening ahead of us, almost like a summer-like night ahead of us here, especially once we get into that warm sector. Um, then tomorrow, we actually may find out our temperatures stay in the 60s. So we may reach our high tonight, or high tomorrow, I should say, tonight at midnight. It'll go down as the high of, say, 75. And then the actual afternoon high tomorrow afternoon may only be in the upper 60s in many spots because of the clouds and spotty showers, and that may continue into Thursday. We may st get stuck under this uh, cloud deck, and that will keep us in the 60s most of the day until we see that erosion from the south to north take place. Something we'll be monitoring. All right, so let's look at the uh, SBC analysis here. This is the wind shear. 35 knots showing up along the warm front this afternoon. It's iffy. It's not bad, but it's right on the border. Uh, stronger wind shear, 45 knots up to 55 knots along the actual cold front. That would certainly lead to a severe potential, uh, but you can see that it's, it's hinting that the warm front has some uh, potential for some wind shear along it. When you look at instability, which is going to be the main trigger on the, the amount of rotation we're looking at, it has some of it in central Kentucky, much more so over here to the uh, Mississippi Valley, 
The ability for spinning, 300 is what I like to look at a lot. It's given out about 100 along the warm front. That's why everything's just right there on the cusp, enough for us to at least mention it to you guys, but I don't want you guys to be worried or um, get nervous about this or anything. You know, it's just something we have to at least mention. It's our job to track it and let you know if it's actually going to be the reality or not once we get into the afternoon. Here's the sounding. This is from the herd model for the afternoon for the warm front. Look at the wind direction. This is coming out of the east at the surface and then southeast aloft. That's a big amount of turning that happens. However, the speeds, which are listed right here, the longer the line, the more stronger the speed is, they're not very valid, relatively weak turning. So it's given us a marginal severe parameter because it's got the instability uh, listed here, <laughs> and descent shear and directional shear there, but it's not again off the charts. Now the NAM model, a little different, and it's over for uh, this evening. Uh, once we get that triple point to move in, that triangle across Indiana, midnight to say 3 a.m., uh, the NAM model, which has a tendency to get a little too excited about these things, it has a little bit more of a wind uh, involved here, a little bit more speed in that turning motion. It's not as valent with the direction, but still enough that that's why it's indicating a possible tornado. As, uh, again, if there's going to be an isolated chance for that, it should be Indiana. We'll monitor it. Uh, now, looking ahead. Uh, we have high pressure, of course, building in after all this mess, so a nice weekend. We have that front moving in as we head into Sunday night and Monday. GFS is trying to line up a little better with the Euro on the timing of it being later Sunday. Then high builds in after that, so cool down. Then another warm-up, and then another drop here on the 20th we'll be watching. Now, the Euro is similar idea because here comes the front. Again, Sunday night. Actually, it's more on Monday morning that the Euro has it, which, again, I like that slower timing. we got the high pressure after it. So far, they agree. Uh, but then the trough. For next, late next week, around the 20th, very dramatic here on the Euro. And when you look at the storm energy ability, it's really showing up here in the front range of the Rockies. And even the wind shear really begins to blossom here. So this is something to watch. Say around the 21st or 22nd of October, this will likely lift a little more to the northeast into the Great Lakes. But it could be a significant severe, severe weather event for the Plains in the Midwest. And it possibly could be for the Ohio Valley something to uh, keep an eye on. So I did increase the thunderstorm chance at least on the 20th and 21st. That's it for now, guys. Stay tuned for updates throughout the day on this uh, thunderstorm potential this afternoon.